Hello and welcome to episode 14 of Inside the World of TCR. Here we are at the end of 2019, another season full of success for the various TCR series around the world. We'll start our final episode of the year with the superb WTCR season finale, where the battle for the title was only decided in the very last race. We'll tell you about TCR Australia and the very first edition of the Motorsport Games, which took place in Vallelunga near Rome. And finally, as a Christmas present, a season review of TCR Europe, one of the most competitive TCR series. Stay with us. An event that used to be the season finale, this year Macau hosted the penultimate event of the FIA WTCR. On the tight, fast and tricky streets of the Asian gambling capital, Ivan Muller grabbed pole for round 25, while championship leader Esteban Guerrieri had to start from the back of the grid because of an engine change. The Lincoln Co cars proved to be extremely competitive from the very beginning. The start of the first race saw blue everywhere. Behind pole sitter Muller, Andy Prio started third, Jan Erlache fifth and Ted Björk sixth. Only Norbert Mikulic's Hyundai second and Kevin Chekon's Alfa Romeo fourth managed to infiltrate the domination of the Chinese cars. On lap two, while Frederick Vervisch was challenging Gabriele Tarquini for eighth at the Lisboa corner, there was this accident involving Benjamin Leuchter, who crashed into the barriers, Mikel Adkona and Jean-Carl Vanet. After starting 11th on the grid, Vavish was the man who animated a race which was not particularly entertaining. This was on lap 4 when the Audi overtook defending champion Gabriele Tarquini for 8th. And one lap later at the Lisboa, he managed to pass Jan Erlache for 7th. After starting from last on the grid, Esteban Guerrieri cruised at the back of the field and eventually retired with two laps to go. For Ivan Muller, it was a lights-to-flag victory, beating Norbert Mikulic by four-tenths. The Hungarian's second place, together with Guerrieri's retirement, meant that he took the lead in the standings with a margin of 18 points over the Argentine. For Muller, this was the third win of the season, proving that after the disappointing weekend at Suzuka, he was still well in contention for the driver's title. Kevin Chekon finished third, grabbing his third podium of the season, after the two third places at the Slovakia ring. Peter, you're allowed in that one. In race two, it was Ivan Muller's teammate and nephew, Jan Erlache, who started from pole. He took the lead into the first corner from teammate Ted Björk, who'd started second, while his uncle, starting from fifth, managed to pass Kevin Chekon and Esteban Guerrieri. On the first lap, Niels Langeveld spun at Lisboa after making contact with Frederick Vervisch, and Mehdi Benani had to break to avoid the pair. Still on the first lap, it was already time for team orders inside the Lincoln Co squad, with Erlache letting Björk and Muller go through, and then Muller passing Björk for the lead. On lap two, Guerrieri overtook Erlache for P3 at Lisboa, the Frenchman losing momentum and dropping behind Chekon, Christofferson and Katzberg. One lap later, with this brave move at Mandarin, the fastest corner in the championship, Chekon passed Guerrieri for third. On lap six, Mehdi Benani hit Attila Tashi from behind at the braking zone into the Lisboa bend, and they both went straight on into the escape road. Ivan Muller encored his race one victory and led Ted Björk in a 1-2 finish for Lincoln Co. With Esteban Guerrieri finishing fourth and Norbert Mikulic tenth, the fight for the title was now even closer. The Hungarian retained the lead in the standings, but his margin over Guerrieri was reduced to 11 points, while Muller closed his gap from Guerrieri to six and points. One, just the, the king of Macau, Rob Huff, was on pole for race three, chasing his tenth win on the gear circuit. But his countryman, Andy Prio, had a better start and took the lead into turn one. Behind the two British men were Vernet and Christofferson, while Katzberg, trying to defend his position from Muller, had left the door open for Björk, who was now fifth. The race was fairly processional. The leading quartet were in a league of their own and pulled away from the rest of the field, but even behind there was no overtaking. Two of the championship contenders, Guerrieri and Mikulic, finished where they'd started, 10th and 12th respectively. To animate the race, once again there were some team orders inside the Lincoln Co squad. When on the last lap, Björk, running in fifth, was asked to slow down in order to allow Ivan Muller, running seventh, to move up a place, while Nicky Katzberg, in the middle of the pair, said thanks and moved to fifth. So this was how former World Touring Car Champion 
champion Andy Prio returned to victory in Macau, 12 years after securing his third world title there in 2007. Prio also completed a clean sweep for Lincoln Co, as his victory in race three followed those scored by Muller in races one and two. So the battle for the title got even tighter. Mikulic's lead was cut to nine points over Gurrieri, with Muller only two further points behind. As for Björk, he was still within striking distance with a 28-point gap. The first race of the season finale at Sipang started behind the safety car on a slippery track and under a light rain with pole sitter and championship leader Norbert Mikulic taking the lead. Title contender Esteban Gurrieri started 10th and did his best to remain in the title battle. This was when he overtook Adkanar and Girolami in the same corner, moving up to 5th. Mikulic led the entire race, followed by Aurelien Panis, who claimed his first podium of the season, while Gabriele Tarquini finished in third position and kept Gurrieri at bay. The Hungarian increased his leading margin in the standings to 27 points ahead of Gurrieri and 35 over Ivan Muller. In the second race, on by now a completely wet track, Gurrieri started eighth, but managed to move up and take the lead on the opening lap, while behind him Muller was sent into a spin by Katzberg, who then went onto the grass and was followed by De Oliveira and Mikulic. Immediately afterwards, Katzberg's Hyundai went on fire and the race was red flagged. After more than an hour, the new start took place behind the safety car. Guerrieri passed Girolami immediately after the green flag and pulled away, heading towards his fourth victory of the season. Norbert Mikulic, meanwhile, managed to score points, finishing eighth. Thanks to his win, Guerrieri closed the gap to Mikulic to ten points. Muller finished the race in sixth position and so dropped out of contention, now 33 points behind the leader. So, it would be an unforgettable finale, with the two title contenders starting on the front row in the last race of the season. Under light rain when the race started, Guerrieri led from Avkanar, Mikulic, Chekon and Vavish. With Mikulic running fourth after being passed by Christofferson, Avkanar chased Guerrieri hard, made contact with him on the straight and the Argentine drove onto the grass. It was an innocent looking excursion off track, which in reality clogged the radiator with grass and mud and brought to an end any hopes of the title for Guerrieri. Christofferson's choice of a full set of slicks paid off and the Swede won the race after starting from P22. Avkanar salvaged second place, beating Czech on to the line by 15 hundredths. So, Norbert Mikulic secured the WTCR title, the second for Hyundai after that of Gabriele Tarquini in 2018. Guerrieri finished second and Muller third. <laughs>《《《《《《《《《》》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《》《
both Chris Pither, who changed the engine, and Nathan Morecambe started from the back and began to recover. Four laps into the race, and Cameron snatched the lead from Brown with the top five cars now covered by just a second. After missing race one because of a power steering issue, Dylan O'Keefe was recovering from the back of the field, but retired with brake problems. While Cameron pulled away, the battle for second remained tight till the end, with Brown being chased by Cox and Moffat. This was how Aaron Cameron claimed his maiden victory in TCR Australia after dominating the entire race. Brown and Cox completed the podium in second and third respectively, with Moffat taking fourth after starting from P8. Cameron's win also meant he moved closer to Tony D'Alberto, who was second in the standings. D'Alberto was classified fifth in the race, so kept a one-point advantage. At the start of race three, Jordan Cox leapt into the lead from P3 on the grid, ahead of James Moffat, Will Brown and Nathan Morecambe, while Aaron Cameron, who sat on pole, made a poor start and found himself in fifth before dropping two further places behind Chris Pither and Andre Heingartner. Three laps into the race, and this was how Morecambe overtook Brown for third, with Pither right behind also putting pressure on Brown. On lap four, Russell Ingall's Audi RS3 LMS lost control and went off track, marking the end of his race. Five laps into the race and all of a sudden Moffat slowed and was passed by Morecambe for second. Immediately after, Moffat had to stop and retire. Halfway through the race, there was a close battle for the lead, with Cox closely followed by Morecambe and Pither. But Cox suddenly went off, and so Morecambe inherited first place. During the final laps, Pither tried to get close enough to attempt an overtaking move, but Morecambe didn't leave him any opportunities, and so finished the HMO Customer Racing Team's triumphant season in style by claiming his maiden TCR victory, and so becoming the ninth different race winner in the Championship's inaugural season. Pither finished second and Brown third. With Brown already clinching the title after race one, Tony D'Alberto secured the runner-up spot as he repeated the fifth place he achieved in the previous race, while his rival Aaron Cameron was slowed by an engine issue during the final laps and had to settle for third place. The first ever FIA Motorsport Games took place at the beginning of November at Vallelunga near Rome. National pride was at stake in a newly launched global motorsport contest that featured six exciting disciplines. GT, touring cars, Formula 4, drifting, karting slalom and digital motorsport. In the touring car category, two races were planned and the cumulative standings would then give gold, silver and bronze medals. Each nation was represented by just one driver and a field of 20 nations formed at the start. Klim Gavrilov and his Team Russia Audi RS3 LMS took the lead at the start of the first race in front of Mato Homola for Slovakia, while Rory Butcher for Great Britain had a slow start from third on the grid due to a clutch problem and was immediately passed by John Filippi representing France and the Netherlands' Tom Coronel. The battle for third was tight with John Filippi defending from various attacks brought by Coronel and Gilles Magnus representing Belgium, who was challenging Coronel for fourth. Magnus, who debuted this year in touring cars by taking part in the full season of TC Europe, where he scored two podiums and one win, proved to be at ease with this kind of door-to-door -door racing, as you can see from this great sequence against Coronel, who finally managed to keep his fourth place. The race was disrupted once by the safety car between laps three and six, to recover Christian Setheren's Alfa Romeo that was stuck out on track after a collision with Salem al Nusif's Audi. The battle for fourth between Coronel and Magnus became tougher and tougher. Six laps into the race at the Roma bend, Magnus tried up the inside, and the front left of his Audi touched the back of Coronel's Honda, which not only lightly spun, but was also damaged, and so the Dutchman dropped to seventh. With an unbalanced car, Coronel then lost another place when he was passed by Sweden's Jessica Beckman with this move. The battle for third between Magnus and Filippi thrilled the spectators for a number of laps, with the pair touching each other several times. Finally, 12 laps into the race, the Belgian managed to pass the Frenchman with this clean move. Klim Gavrilov had a much better pace than Homola and was able to create a solid gap that wouldn't be beaten. 
the Russian won in front of Homola and Magnus. John Filippi was fourth. Dusan Kuril, representing the Czech Republic, was fifth, and Fein Kaya, representing New Zealand, managed to finish sixth, despite being robustly challenged by Jessica Beckman in the last part of the race. This was how race two for Mason Philippi, representing the USA, ended. On the warm-up lap, the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge runner-up lost control of his Hyundai, which was so heavily damaged that he had to retire. So, after a second warm-up lap, the race finally started, and Magnus used his pole to take the lead from Gavrilov, Homola, Kaya, Coronel and Philippi. However, the safety car was deployed on the first lap, as the cars of Enrico Viterra, representing Italy, and Germany's Luca Engstler were stuck on the pit straight after having crashed. The Italian had stalled on the grid with a broken drive shaft, and Engstler couldn't avoid hitting him. Soon after the race restarted, Kaya tried to pass Homolo for P3, but at very high speed he ran wide onto the grass, lost control, and went off at the Cimini 1 bend, luckily without colliding with any of the other drivers. His race ended in the gravel. While a light rain started to fall, with this brave manoeuvre on the outside of the last corner, Tom Coronel managed to pass Matto Homolo for third, despite a track which was now quite slippery. While Gilles Magnus managed to retain the lead and build a gap, Gavrilov struggled with the slippery track and quickly lost his advantage on Coronel, and he had to fight with the Dutchman to save both second place and the two crucial points that was worth the gold medal. The pair clashed a couple of times, but in the end the young Russian managed to keep his position. Jessica Beckman proved to be at ease in the conditions. This was when the Swede passed Norbert Kiss, representing Hungary and driving an Alfa Romeo Giulietta for eighth. The safety car was deployed again when Zheng Dong Zhang went off track at the Semaforo bend. When the race restarted on the final lap, Jessica Beckman moved up to seventh with this manoeuvre, which saw off the Honda Civic of Ka To, representing Hong Kong. He rejoined in ninth place. With a regrouped field, the last few corners of the race were breathtaking. Tom Coronel was pushing like a madman to pass Gavrilov for second, and his Honda touched the Audi of the Russian. Finally, in the last corner, while Gavrilov was safe in second, Coronel was challenged by Rory Butcher, representing Great Britain in an MG6 but everyone managed to keep their positions. Magnus finished first in front of Gavrilov, Coronel, Butcher, Homola and Filippi. And so, combining the two races, and after defending his position until the final few metres of the race, Gavrilov won the gold medal, and in the mini park Ferme it was time for celebration. Gilles Magnus took silver for Belgium, and Matto Homola bronze for Slovakia. No medal, sadly, for Filippi in fourth, Coronel in fifth, and Butcher sixth. Congratulations, that Thanks. smile on your face says it all. Well done for Russia. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it was a hard race uh, because we had some contacts with Tom Coronel, but I'm here, so that's it. And you show, you wipe the floor clean with them. I know, it's just a race. Just You're a race. completely out of breath, aren't you? Too much excitement, how do you feel standing here? Uh, very great, very great. I'm very happy. Hey! He's ready to get his gold medal, congratulations. Here's it was, a little, yeah, it was a little bit hard, but it's okay. This is story car racing. Yeah. And this was when Gavrilov received his gold medal, a first in the world of motorsport. This first edition of the Games was definitely a success, and the FIA are already working on the next chapter of the story. once again to the three young, talented drivers. 2019 was another season full of action and tension in TCR Europe. It all started at the Hungaro Ring with a record entry of 37 cars for a total of seven different manufacturers. On a track where overtaking isn't easy, young Belgian Gilles Magnus, debuting in touring cars, showed some nice moves, while Matto Homolo converted his pole position into victory in front of Josh Files and another touring car rookie, Nelson Ponciatisi, driving for M Racing, Ivan Muller's team. Race two, and under light rain, which made the track very tricky, Magnus, Julian Brichet and Dusan Borkovic thrilled the spectators with a tight battle for second, which finally saw the French driver come out on top. Two laps later, Brichet overtook the local hero, Danny Nage, for the lead. 
Brichet took the win in front of Magnus and Nage, but with Magnus taking the lead in the standings in front of Pontiatisi, there were two touring car rookies on top after the first event. Some fierce battles livened the first race at Hockenheim. On the second lap, no fewer than eight cars arrived side by side into turn six, battling for eighth place. With almost everybody touching somebody, Gianni Morbidelli and Matto Homolo were those who suffered the most, going wide and losing positions. There were no mistakes for Josh Files during the entire race, and so the first win of the season for him, with yes. Luca Engstler second and Maxime Potti third. After a difficult touring car debut at the Hungaro Ring, Uruguayan Santiago Urrutia started to feel more at ease in his Audi. This was when he took fifth from Potti in race two. Brichet grabbed his second win of the season in front of compatriot Aurelien Comte and Sweden's Jessica Beckman, who stepped onto the TCR Europe podium for the first time, while Josh Files took the lead of the championship with a five-point advantage over Brichet. Two men dominated race one in Spa. Gilles Magnus started from pole and Santiago Urrutia started second, both driving an Audi RS3 LMS. On lap five, the Uruguayan overtook the Belgian into La Source, but only for a few seconds. Magnus was quickly leading again at the exit of the corner as the field headed down to Eau Rouge. With Brichet, who crashed in his Peugeot heavily during free practice and retired after only one lap, and Files completing only four laps, the championship lead changed hands. For Gilles Magnus, it was his first win of the year, while Urrutia was second in front of Potti. The second race was then a Brichet masterclass. Starting fifth, the Frenchman quickly started to move up. This was when he took third from Homola on lap three. And this was three laps later when he took the lead from Borkovic, who was then hit from behind by Jimmy Claret. The Serbian spun and his race was effectively over. On the last lap, Tom Coronel was hit from behind at Radion by Luca Filippi. The Dutchman crashed heavily into the barriers and luckily everyone managed to avoid the stricken Honda. Briche once again confirmed his role as king of the reversed grid, grabbing his third consecutive race two win. He also took the lead of the championship with a 13-point gap over Magnus and 24 over Comte. Things dramatically changed for Briche in the following event at the Red Bull Ring. Starting from 17th on the grid, the Frenchman suffered an engine failure and instead of stopping the car, he tried to carry on, blowing his engine completely. Three laps into the race and Martin Reba hit Santiago Urrutia, sending him into a spin and triggering a pileup that involved Davidovsky, Jessica Beckman, Kangas, Comte and Teddy Claret. Luckily, no one was injured. On the penultimate lap, a superb battle for third thrilled the spectators. Dan Lloyd's Honda challenged Pontiatisi's Hyundai in a very aggressive but clean way and in the end he managed to pass the Frenchman. After starting from pole, Files won from Filippi and Lloyd and retook the lead in the standings because none of the drivers who were placed on top of the classification before the race scored points. Yeah. Race two was one of the most spectacular of the season and the duel between Filippi and Engstler was the cherry on the cake. This was the aggressive way the Italian overtook the German on lap 11. This was how it dramatically ended on the last lap. Filippi went a little wide, Engstler took the inside line and touched the Italian who lost control of his Hyundai, spun and crashed into the barriers. Luca Engstler grabbed his maiden win in TCR Europe in front of Files and Morgan, yeah. and so moved up to second in the driver's standings. At Oschersleben in race one, Dan Loy took the chequered flag in third place, but later he was promoted to first. Andreas Beckman was excluded after his car was found to have an irregular front end, and Poncia TC, second at the finish, was given a 30-second penalty for a collision with Jessica Beckman. In the second race, Potti spun after making contact with Matto Homola. The Belgian would rejoin but wouldn't score points and the Slovakian driver would retire, dropping down to fourth in the driver's standings. Alex Morgan snatched his first TCR Europe victory and Josh Files with 60 points scored over the weekend and all the others struggling increased his series lead to an impressive 78 points. In the first race at Barcelona, championship contender Engstler went wide on lap six and his ambitions for the title evaporated. Brichet and Files took the chequered flag in first and second positions, but after the race they were both penalised, and so the win went to Andreas Beckman. In the second race on lap seven, Brichet easily overtook Jack Young's Renault Megane for third. 
For Dan Lloyd, it was a lights to flag win. Magnus was second and Brichet third. The Frenchman scored 30 points more than Files over the weekend, keeping alive his hopes for the season finale. In Monza, for the last event of the season, Files struggled in qualifying, while in the opening race he managed to finish on the podium. This was when he overtook Urrutia for third. But with Brichet winning the race in front of Comte for a Peugeot 1-2, the British driver was still unable to celebrate. In the very last race of the season, Files, starting second on the grid, took the lead on the opening lap when he overtook Maxime Potty. But Brichet, starting from ninth, was on a mission. He moved up lap after lap, and on lap eight he passed Lloyd for second, giving Files no room for error. Tension was high right until the last lap, with Brichet doing his best to put pressure on Files. But the Brit yes! was calm enough to control the situation and took the win, his third of the season, and so secured the title. In the final driver standings, Brichet finished second, while Urrutia, after a consistent weekend in Monza, managed to secure third place. That then was Inside the World of TCR episode 14, the last of 2019. We hope you enjoyed a terrific season, we wish you a happy new year, and we look forward to bringing you more great racing in 2020. But for now, it's goodbye.